CataractCoach.com. Why does this eye have a green reflex? Seems like an unusual case, right? It's a canine case. This is a dog having cataract surgery. And our operating guest surgeon, Dr. Glau Bertasso from Brazil, is a veterinary ophthalmologist. Now, there are some important differences between canine cataract surgery and human cataract surgery. Now, obviously, the canines don't complain of residual astigmatism and blurry vision when it's 20-25 on post-op day one, right? So they're, they're a lot nicer than humans. But if we look here at this case, the dimensions of the eye are very different. Average axial length for a canine is about 20.4 millimeters. AC depth is deeper than humans, usually about 3.8 millimeters. Vitreous cavity is shorter, only about 10 millimeters. Therefore, the dioptric strength of an eye is much more. So you need a higher power lens. An average human may have a lens power of somewhere around 20 diopters, right? Typical dog, you're looking at more than that. You're looking at usual power somewhere in the 40 diopter range for these dogs, right? So typical corneal curvature in these eyes is about 40 diopters. The lens is different too. It's a larger diameter. Look how big that lens is. So it's 10 to 12 millimeter diameter. And it's a lot thicker. A human lens front to back is usually four, four and a half millimeters. And a dog, it can be seven, eight, nine, even 10 millimeters. Also, if you look at these dogs, what else is different? The lens capsule and the anterior lens capsule is thicker than humans. For humans, it's about 14 microns. And dogs, it can be a lot thicker than that, many times that. But the posterior lens capsule in a dog is just about the same as a human, about four microns. So in these cases, with that thick anterior lens capsule, using just a cystome to create that rexus is just not possible. So you have to use the forceps here. It's so thick. So very important here. Now, for most dogs, about a 40 diopter lens is going to give them emetropy in an average dog. And surprisingly, that does not vary too much along different breeds. Most canine IOLs... Um, Again, are implanted in the capture bags, very similar to what we use. The diameter, the sizing is a little bit different. So overall, haptic to haptic length can be 13 to about 15 millimeters. And the optic can be bigger too, 6 to 8 millimeters. You can see nucleus removal is very similar. It's just there's a lot more nucleus. And so it's a lot denser. There's a lot more lens material. So the diameter is larger, remember, than a human. Plus the anterior to posterior dimension is much larger. Because remember, why does it have to be much larger? Human, average human lens, crystal lens is 20 diopters in power. Average canine lens, crystal lens is about 40. So it's got to be much thicker, about twice as thick, right? Very similar lens proteins. And then their retinal structure is different as well. There's an extra layer there that causes this greenish silvery reflex. You've seen in humans that we have a red reflex, but if you ever take a picture of your dog or see the dogs at night, you see they have more of a silvery green reflex to their eye. That's also responsible for why they have a little bit better night vision than us humans. And that's because that extra layer can help reflect light back to further stimulate the retina. So yeah, removing the nucleus just takes time. Chop techniques are done here. You know, I got sent a bunch of veterinary videos because a lot of veterinary ophthalmologists are cataract coach fans. Yes, my videos are almost exclusively human, except this one. So this is less than one in a thousand or canine. But the nice part here is, yes, we're all ophthalmologists. We all do the same surgery. And so there are a lot of similarities here. And I do not recommend that you try to do canine dog surgery. You're a, a human, uh, your patients are humans. You should stick to humans. Leave the canine uh, cataract surgery to the veterinary ophthalmologist. They have far more expertise than we do. But look at that corneal diameter, so big. As you know, I love dogs. Dogs are just such sweet creatures. We're, as humans, so blessed to have them in our lives. At the end here, that lens keeps coming down. That, that green reflex really is something else, isn't it? It is just amazing to see that a difference in anatomy. And the last bits and pieces are coming down here. And then the rest of the surgery is pretty similar. Now, draping is going to be a little more challenging than these canines. I don't know if those plastic drapes are going to stick to fur as well. And obviously, anesthesia has got to be on a whole nother level. These dogs are not going to hold still like your, your human cataract patients. They're going to need a lot more systemic anesthesia. And so that all has to be administered as well. Interesting, the incisions are very similar. They tend to use our same phaco machines. So our veterinary ophthalmologists, those are our brothers and sisters here. They're doing the same thing we are. In fact, they have more of a challenge. 
the, the complexity of their surgery is probably more than ours, and also the variability among different species of animals. They're not just doing dog cataracts, canine cataracts, they're doing feline cataracts. So here at the end, pretty clean. Now, guess what? Switching over to, last piece of cataract coming out, switching over to an IA probe, just like you do. Yeah, but interesting, very short vitreous cavity. And so very high power lenses here. And so cleaning up here, we're obviously showing you the video sped up at higher speed. And um, the corneal tissue also is different in these dogs. In the typical, uh, as I've heard from these doctors, is that they're going to put a suture in. So the incisions themselves may not seal as well as we're used to in elderly, think, elderly humans. Think of the younger humans we operate on. When you do cataract surgery on a young child, a baby, congenital cataract, you don't have good sealing of that corneal tissue. It's just too elastic. And so if you have any incision in the cornea in a young human, you definitely have to put in sutures. Here at the end, here comes the lens. Take a look at this. I'm not sure which manufacturer are making these lenses, but there it goes in the bag. And it is definitely a bigger lens. Looks like almost a plate happy design, acrylic lens material. Again, overall diameter here is 13 to 15 millimeters. Ha ha edge of haptic to edge of haptic. And the optics can be bigger, 6 to 8 millimeters. Cleaning up here at the end. Yeah, this is going to be a beautiful outcome for this dog. And most of these dogs, are the human owners are waiting till the dogs have these white cataracts. So it's certainly a challenge to get that white cataract out. Now, in terms of refractive targeting, I would assume you're targeting essentially for emetropia. If anything, maybe just a, a tiny pinch of myopia. And it looks like these are just monofocal lenses. And at the end here, you got to suture it up. So let's speed up the video even more to watch the very end of this. And you can see the suturing here looks like with 10 nylon. So thank you for submitting the video. I really appreciate it. I'm actually speaking at the veterinary ophthalmology meeting here in Southern California in October. And I look forward to seeing all our veterinary brother and sister ophthalmologists and sharing our pearls for success to help our patients. Thanks for watching.